Hi my loves, welcome back to Lavender. So it has been a crazy eventful week on top of an already crazy and very eventful 2020. 2020 is really a year guys. It is just so much is happening and I feel that we are very very lucky and blessed to be living during this time because it's truly a transformative very special time to be in. I already envision in the future all the history books documentaries and movies made about the time that we are living through right now. So first and foremost, I have to say Black Lives Matter. It's incredibly sad and frustrating how there's still so much racism in the world, how much this racism is embedded in our culture and our systems, our institutions in America. And it's incredibly hard to know that there's generational trauma that goes all the way back to the days of slavery and there's just so much pain that has not been dealt with. So many biases that have just cycled from generation to generation and it's compounded to this crazy broken system that we have today. And I know that progress has been made, but at the same time, black people are dealing with racism, police brutality, all of these problems that they have been dealing with for the past 200 years. And it's just transformed into a modern version now. And I have muted myself for the past week. I haven't been posting Lavender content on YouTube or Instagram or anywhere because I wanted to push black voices. I wanted to just learn about this movement, educate myself, take time to listen and truly seek to understand the pain that black people have been going through for too long, for way too long in America. And as an Asian American who was born and raised in the US, I acknowledge that I have privileges and it's sad to say that I have more privilege than a black person in America whose family has been here much longer than my family has. I may not have the same privileges as a white person in America, but I definitely have some privilege and I have to acknowledge that. Like I can go jogging in a hoodie and not fear for my life, not fear that I will be shot and murdered. I can get arrested and not fear that the cops will murder me. I am privileged as an Asian woman because I don't look intimidating. People don't look at me. Cops don't look at me and think that I'm a criminal just because of the way I look, the color of my skin. And that is something that black people have to deal with. And it's just so, so, so sad to hear all the stories of the people that have been unjustly murdered by police, whether it's an accident, whether it was on purpose, but the cop gets off without any charges or anything. George Floyd, Ahmaud Arbery, Breonna Taylor, Sandra Bland, Trayvon Martin, the list goes on and on and on about all these black people who have died for reasons that are not fair. And it's incredibly sad. And I watched the documentary The 13th on Netflix, which I highly, highly, highly recommend you guys watch. Like literally add it to your list right now and watch it tonight if you haven't already because it really paints the picture of why the police are the way that they are. Our system in America of mass incarceration, we put so many people behind bars for like small misdemeanors. A black person can get more jail time than a white person, even if they committed the same exact crime. And it's, it's really messed up and it's really oppressive. It's crazy because we're living in the year 2020 and we look back at the times of slavery and segregation and they feel like they are so long ago. And we feel like we should be so much further ahead by now. You know, we had a black president, we have Beyonce and Oprah, but we forget that systems and society are not transformed radically overnight. It's not that slavery was abolished and then immediately the society became like completely tolerant of black people and super non-racist and everything was fair. Like it's not like that. It took many little steps and tweaks and as society and the systems are slowly changing and adapting to its current times, there's always going to be people wanting to pull it back to previous times because that's what they prefer. That's what's comfortable to them. And so I see progress as like a tug and pull, like society's not going to change like in a positive trajectory at a consistent rate. It's really going to look like that jagged, 
graph where you make some progress, you take two steps forward, one step back, three steps forward, five steps back. And if you are living through this time, you can probably feel that tug and pull, the tug of the people who want to move forward and change things for the better and the tug of people who don't want change, who want it to go back to the way it used to be or whatever. And I have much more faith in humanity after this week. At the beginning of the week, I did not have faith. I was just so sad at how the system was. I just cried at how unfair just everything was built. Seeing government and media trying to distract us, trying to put down protesters, how police treated protesters, all the tear gas and violence, and that was really sad and hard to see. But I think in the past couple days, I have restored more faith in humanity because I've seen so many people, so many of my friends, and just so many people across the world like share their support for this movement and prove and show that they truly care about human beings because at the root of this entire Black Lives Matter movement is love. It's us showing that we care about people regardless of the color of your skin because people are people, we are all human beings and we all have this inherent knowing that systems and organizations are created for the people, like governments and police and school systems are created to benefit the people because we make up the society. And it's such a misalignment when we see that the governments or organizations created by people do not have the people's best interest at heart. Police are supposed to be protecting and serving the people and yet our police in America are killing and hurting more people than it really should and it's just so wrong. Solving these problems we have in our society is not an easy fix. It's something that has been built over hundreds of years and to dismantle it and reform it and create something positive that will work for everyone, that will take time. And this is where the power of community and our unity comes into play because each of us plays a part in this. I am not an expert at politics or how to change the world in these aspects that desperately need changing, but that's why I need to listen to someone who does. And we all need to listen to that person who does. We need to look to our activists and our leaders in this Black Lives Movement and just leaders in community who we know are fighting for good. And this is a time for us to keep sharing resources with each other. What petitions do we need to sign? Who do we need to email? I love how K-pop stands have risen up in this movement and they have done such a huge part in all of this. And that makes me happy. But really, this is such a collective effort and it's really the biggest movement I've ever seen in my lifetime. It is amazing. And we all have a chance to be a part of this. We don't have to be perfect. You don't have to do everything everything, but you can do something. All right, so now I wanna share the Lavender perspective on it all because you guys know I like to think big picture, what does this mean, what are we learning as a whole? So astrologically, 2020 is a crazy year. You guys know I've been learning astrology. I'm really into it. I've been learning much more lately on my downtime. Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto went into Capricorn at the beginning of the year, signaling that we were gonna have major transformation and reform in government and corporations and large systems. It started with the virus, the pandemic, and then now we have the civil rights, human rights, Black Lives Matter movement that's going on and it's not gonna end anytime soon like we are gonna continue to change transform revolutionize society I think till 2021 and obviously it'll trickle on beyond that anyway this is a time where we as a humanity are collectively raising our vibration we are raising it so that we can reach a higher consciousness we're up leveling the vibration and the consciousness of the earth and what I mean by vibration is good energy. If you think of unconditional love, love for yourself, love for others, for all living things equally, like unconditionally, that is the highest 
level of vibration there is and there's love there's gratitude happiness all of those are high vibrations and low vibrations are sadness depression fear anger guilt blame things like that are low vibe and i mentioned in the video i did on the pandemic that people are going from seeing each other as separate to realizing that we are all interconnected we are all one we're united you know what i do affects this person what this person does affects me and spiritually we are all connected spiritually we are all just one thing <laughs> one entity whatever you want to believe you can think about it this way love is to unity and fear is to separation when you truly love yourself and you love others then you treat each other with kindness compassion you listen you have empathy you have less judgment for others but when you have fear in your heart whether you're afraid that you're not good enough or you're afraid of other people because of prejudices or discrimination for any reason that creates separation. That creates an us versus them feeling. Love breeds more love and fear breeds more fear. I honestly believe one of our greatest spiritual lessons on earth is to learn how to come back to love, how to learn to have unconditional love for ourselves and for everyone else, for the world, and to be able to just get to a point where we release our fears, release limiting beliefs, and and only fill it back in with love to the point where we're like vibrating at our highest potential. We are our highest best selves, the most kind, compassionate selves that we can be. I wrote the sentence in my journal, all which is not love teaches us to come back to love. So when we see the lack of love in the world, where we see people hurting each other, where we see systems are broken and not benefiting the people, it makes us mad. It brings up so many emotions and feelings because it feels unfair. There's a lack of justice and equality and fairness there. And I do believe that deep down, each of us, each of our souls understands what love is. And that's why something happens, something stirs within us when we see the lack of love in the world our soul is like what the heck is going on like this is not right and that is the part of you that is coming out when you see black people getting hurt dying at the hands of police for just dumb reasons or no reason at all and that is why we are so moved by this movement and it's just amazing because the more people that are part of this, that are moved by this, we have more and more love, more and more love that's vibrating together collectively. And unity is powerful, guys. Like, if you have not paid attention to what the media and the government are doing, they are trying to divide us. They are trying to make protesters and looters look bad. They're trying to steer you away from what's actually happening, steer you away from the cause and the movement because they want to divide people. They want us to look at other people and judge them. They want to separate us. And if you guys have ever heard the term divide and conquer, in military and war, it's because we're easier to control when we are divided. So they are trying to divide and conquer us. But I see so many people stepping up in unity and we have so much power in unity, so much power in numbers. The visual of the crowds of people protesting is so powerful. And this is happening during a pandemic where the people protesting are aware that they are possibly exposing themselves to coronavirus and yet they are still willing to get out there and protest and I think that is so beautiful. That speaks to the human spirit. So I just want to remind you all to recognize the love that you are seeing in yourself and in the world right now because it is beautiful that is our power that is how we're going to bring about change that's how we're going to lift up society change what we got to change do what we have to do to create a better world for the future and on top of that i just want to say listen seek to understand only when we actually have an open honest dialogue with each other try to understand each other's point of view do we actually make progress 
arguing and just getting angry at each other is not productive. So it's a time to listen, to learn, to educate yourself, and then take action where you can take action. I will list a ton of resources down below, petitions you can sign, things you can read, things you can watch to educate yourself. You don't have to be perfect. No one's gonna be perfect in this journey. I know I'm not perfect. I'm not gonna say the perfect things. I'm not gonna know everything there is to know about this movement or black history. I'm never gonna fully understand what it's like to grow up black in America or in this world but I'm here to listen and to learn and to figure out how I can be of service in pushing us forward even if it's in a tiny way like making a video sharing my thoughts we are here to strive for progress not perfection we're gonna make mistakes along the way it doesn't matter as long as we learn from those mistakes so just do your best be kind compassionate understanding and also don't forget to take care of yourself because with all this energy and craziness going on you're gonna need to protect your energy and also take time to decompress I know I had to take a few days out of this past week to just do nothing to just read to get in a clearer mind space for myself so make sure you have those self-care practices in place love you all so much and I will see you next time bye